Uh, I once read the diary of a combat soldier and he described a firefight that lasted eight hours. And he said, in his diary, he said, you wonder what a soldier thinks about in a firefight. And they think about, am I gonna live? Will I see my wife and my kids again? And he said, every muscle remains tense in your body for eight hours, the whole firefight. And then he said, it was at sunset that we defeated the enemy and they began to run. And he said, and they turned and left. And I knew for the first time in eight hours that I was not gonna die, that I was gonna live. And he said, spontaneously, there comes out of your body the loudest shout you can imagine. It's not capable of happening in a sporting event, but it's a shout that is absolutely indescribable. We're gonna do it. But first, I wanna tell you another quick story. How many ever been tired? <laughs> How many of you can raise both arms and a leg? I've been tired. <laughs> well, I was tired, and you don't do good counseling when you're tired. And this lady walked up to me and she said, I have a problem. I looked at her, I asked her a question. I said, are you going to hell? And she said, no, I'm saved. I said, well then pretty much you don't have a problem. <laughs> I maybe believe if you've answered the hell question, pretty much everything else is good. This question for you is not done for theatrics. It's not done for uh, effect. It's to put you in a frame of mind for what I'm gonna say next. How many of you sincerely believe that if Christ hadn't saved you when he did, that by now you'd be dead? Leave your hand up. You'd be in hell. You just said that. If I hadn't been saved when I was, by now I'd be dead and I'd be in hell, and you're not. And I think that there is a argument to be made when David said, restore to me the joy of my salvation, that he's talking about a revelation of what happened that moment. The disaster that was saved is infinitely greater than that man in that firefight. So I think we need to shout that we're saved. Clap your hands. Shout. 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 Yeah. Yes. How many of you glad you're saved? Oh. I could give the altar call right now. We just saved 12 minutes. You may be seated. Thank you. In our tent crusades, and I don't know how many of you have ever attended them, which began about two and a half years ago, when I was in Stockton, California on a Sunday afternoon, I had already moved to Reno, Nevada, and uh, I was preaching in Stockton when I had a supernatural experience. And in that experience, I was in a dream hovering over the state of California, and one piece of road became very vivid to me, Highway 99, that ran from Red Bluff to Laval Road, 40 miles south of Bakersfield. And as I stared at it in the dream, it turned into a river. Some of you are giving me that Rockland look right now. <laughs> and when it turned into a river, I saw trees popping up on either side of this river. And suddenly the Lord said, this is a corridor of my glory. My glory is gonna flow through the Central Valley in a great revival. Well, you can imagine how thrilled I was to convey that news to the people I thought it was for. Stockton, and I said, I'm in Reno. A 
Five years went by and I began wanting a tent, not knowing why I wanted a tent. I was like that kid in the Christmas story, wanted the rifle, I wanted a tent. The reason I wanted a tent is there's no atmosphere like a tent, except one other atmosphere, being outdoors like we are tonight. That's an amazing atmosphere. That's why Billy Graham loved it so much. Any event, very quickly, all these years go by, five years, never gave that dream another thought, and then I wanted a tent. Suddenly I'm in Florida on a radio network, and the owner of the network says, Mario, is there anything that our network can donate to you? You remember in that Christmas story, he forgot he wanted the rifle when Santa Claus said, and what would you like, little boy? And that was me, I drew a blank. And he said, how about if we give you a tent? He said, we only used it once, it's 8,000 square feet, and we're gonna give you a thousand chairs to go in it that are from the NFL stadium in Atlanta from their luxury boxes. So I took it all and it arrived at my house in a semi truck. <laughs> and my neighbors are looking out the window. We did not know how to deal with this. Miraculously, we were able to. Three days later, a second semi truck shows up. <laughs> And the verse is going through my head that says, see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you do not have room to contain. We had nowhere to put it. At the same time, a man of God, Frank, would you stand up for a moment? Frank Saldana, the leader of inner city action. Thank you, Frank. This man's a hero. He's more effective among the homeless than anyone I've seen ever. It wins them by the thousands. Well, he and I kind of knew about each other, never met. I'm in Reno, he's in Stockton where the dream happened. And God begins to give him a burden to put up tents. And I have a tent with no one to put it up. So that's where it went. And suddenly these tent crusades near crack houses and homeless camps began to blow up. And I said, God, why the Central Valley? And I looked it up, and do you realize that if ever you wanted to know where leftist politics has failed, it has failed in the Central Valley. <laughs> Bitterly failed. If you ever wanted proof that it's alive from the pit of hell, the Central Valley. First, they cut off their water. Then they gave them predatory mortgage loans that turned entire neighborhoods into ghost towns. Then the cartels in Mexico put their first boots on the ground on American soil in the Central Valley. They began to turn cities like Stockton and Fresno and Modesto into drug and gang war zones. The Lord reminded me that when Jesus came to earth, they all thought the Messiah would make his grand entrance into Jerusalem. Instead, he went to the northern tribes, Naphtali, Zebulun, where you'll find Capernaum and the Gadarenes. And these cultures were devastated. In fact, their children weren't entitled to the same education as the children that lived closer to Judah. And the Lord said, that's what I'm doing in the Central Valley. At one time, in 2010, they named the top 10 worst cities in America, and five of them were in the Central Valley of California. But now the Central Valley is being visited by a great revival, a move of the Spirit. Somebody clap and give God glory. 